Part one continues as Santiago approaches Tarifa, where he remembers a dream interpreter who lives there and decides to pay her a visit. When the woman leads him to a back room, he realizes she's a gypsy. Now, Santiago is afraid of gypsies, but gives her his palm and tells her his dream anyway. In the dream, a child guides Santiago to the Egyptian pyramids and tells him, if you come here, you will find a hidden treasure. The gypsy tells Santiago he should go to the pyramids. Santiago leaves and finds a spot in the village to relax and read a book. He can barely get past the introductory burial scene when an old man sits down, introducing himself as Melchizedek. He asks Santiago to trade one-tenth of his sheep for information about his buried treasure. Santiago believes the old man and the gypsy are working together to con him. After all, the gypsy had asked for one-tenth of his treasure when he finds it. Melchizedek tries to persuade Santiago that he's the king of Salem. Melchizedek introduces the concept of a personal legend. What a person truly wants to accomplish in their life, most people fail to fulfill. That's their personal legend. And because of fear or to please someone else, such as a parent or a guardian, they choose to set their own dreams aside. Santiago asks why Melchizedek is telling him all this. And he says, you are trying to realize your personal legend. You're about to give it all up. Santiago considers what he would lose if he chose to go to Egypt. His sheep, his parents, his home, the merchant's daughter. In the end, he decides to take Melchizedek up on his offer and set sail for Africa. In this section, Santiago advances on his hero's journey. He meets a helper, Melchizedek, a wise old man who gives him significant information to help him pursue his personal legend. He crosses a first threshold by selling his sheep and embarking on a boat to Tangier. Now the gypsy woman fills the archetypal role of a herald, a character who urges Santiago to answer the call to adventure. She demonstrates a kind of belief in him by asking for a tenth of his treasure. The narrator depicts an open-minded yet skeptical Santiago. His curiosity leads him to the dream interpreter, but his intuition prompts him to leave the gypsy's house and take what she says with a grain of salt. Santiago emerges as a good listener and student. As Melchizedek tells his stories, he doesn't connect all the dots for Santiago, but challenges him to discover the meanings on his own, which he does. This is typical of allegorical writing. Now here we see treasure and personal legend are interchangeable. The hero's quest has begun.